I have the honor and the privilege of introducing you to three people. And uh, I'm going to tell you who those are. Uh, force, a former drug czar, four star General Mc, McCaffrey, uh, Barry McCaffrey, and also former drug czar uh, and Latin American Iraq commander and CEO of CRC, the largest treatment provider in the country, Andy Eckhart, and also uh, Miss America, New Mexico, 2013, Alexis Dupre is on the air with us. Uh, right now, we're going to be talking to Andy Eckhart. This is, these guys are so busy. We've got to get what they have to share in a very short period of time. Uh, Andy, welcome to Take 12 Radio. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Okay, this is Recovery Month. And uh, the the country should be all abuzz about the number one health threat in our country, addiction. What is going on with you guys? Couldn't agree more, Mom. The number one affliction in this country, as you know, this is National Recovery Month. Uh, we're celebrating several milestones this month. First and foremost, celebrating 20 million or more Americans that are in successful recovery today. We're celebrating 80 years of, of productivity and, and sobriety with AA, 60 years with Narcotics Anonymous, and uh, 20 years uh, with one of our very outstanding facilities, one of CRC's facilities in Santa Fe, known as Life Healing Center. Life Healing Center uh, is about a 30-bed facility just outside downtown Santa Fe, beautiful location. We've treated over 5,000 patients in this, uh, individuals in this, in this center's proud history. And so one of the things that our company does is the largest company in chemical dependency substance abuse treatment is we use this month to get out and, and celebrate at one of our facilities, um, you know, all the progress that our field has made. But but alongside that, we are here to highlight the challenge. And uh, the challenge remains 24 million or more Americans that are not getting the treatment they need. And these are the types of events with Miss New Mexico and General McCaffrey. Uh, we try to draw attention. We try to draw media attention to the fact that um, many folks out there, as your listeners know, just don't know that help is available. And so that is really our objective. We've got a number of local dignitaries uh, speaking today. Uh, we'll be releasing the balloons at, at lunchtime along with 100 other facilities that are part of CRC. So a simultaneous barrage of balloons around this country. We'll have uh, a number of folks who are in successful recovery today tell their stories and uh, it's just part of what we do as a leading organization. In this field, we really feel it's our duty to get the word out. Now, this is happening at 11 o'clock, and it, it, the address is 25 Vista Point Road, Santa Fe, New Mexico, correct? That is correct. Okay. And lots of speakers, lots of experience, strength, and hope. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. With the parity bill... We know it's one thing to write legislation. It's another thing to apply and implement it and get, getting every state to respect that. True? Uh, more true than you could believe. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are uh, very actively involved in the ongoing now entering its fifth year of debate, uh, particularly focused uh, on how to implement the Parity Act. Particular, particular folks today is, is tr trying our best with all of our colleagues in this field to convince the powers that be to, to include residential treatment as a key level of care in, 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 in behavioral health treatment. Uh, we, we hope we're winning that fight. We don't know yet, uh, to be sure. But, but regardless of how that turns out, yeah. uh, the, the reality is there are more financial resources today, particularly prospectively, available um, than, than ever before. Uh, the, the young adult population, what we call the failure to launch demographic folks that are, you know, young adults that are now able to stay on their parents' insurance till age 26, that has uh, really opened up a, 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 a group of, an age group that needs our help, and uh, it's an exploding demand out there. Just this year, we've added uh, probably 200 residential beds. 
We've opened up probably five PHP programs in the country, a number of outpatient IOP uh, programs in the country as we try to continue to adjust the levels of care, the, the services that we provide to meet the demands of today's market, most importantly, the financial resources of today's market. Right, right. Well, I, and I tell people this all the time, you 12-steppers out there that really know how this thing works and you know the solution and you know how to apply and implement these 12 steps, you better get ready because we're going to get a, 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 a flow of people like never before. We better be ready to step up to the plate as sponsors and uh, spiritual advisors, et cetera, right? Absolutely. And I'll tell you one thing that's happening. It's interesting. I just met with the CEO of one of the major behavioral health managed care companies who told me that not only is the demand uh, outstripping any expectation that they had for this young adult audience, he's very concerned about the quality of programs that are being started. You know, where there's an unmet demand, often there, there, there are folks that show up that are not certified, not qualified, not educated and trained in our field. What CRC Health is doing 4,500 people strong. We've invested over $5 million in the last two years building out evidence-based practice. Right. We put into work. We built a clinical advisory board with 15 of the names that your listeners would be familiar with, leading folks in this field. And, uh, and we, we are now out doing therapeutic alliance. We're measuring the therapeutic alliance on the ground at all of our facilities. We put in videotape clinical supervision at our facilities to try to drive the continuous improvement of skills of our 1,000, 1,000-plus counselors around the country. We cannot run on autopilot. We cannot, in this field, continue to do the things and, and treat people the way they've been treated for 50 years. Right. Or else we will not get uh, our fair share of the federal funding dollars. That's just reality. And so I'm working very closely with, with former Congressman Patrick Kennedy uh, and others to try to make sure that we're bringing real clinical data and validated clinical practices to this field because it's one area of healthcare that just has not progressed as rapidly as others. And as you know, where there's data, there's, there's often results and there's improvement and there's justification for the, the, the large amount of spending that, that, that this field demands. And absolutely, absolutely. And this is the year of data, as several people have said, and, and, and it's so important that we do this thing. Uh, Andy, thank you so much. Uh, because of time, we need to move on to our next guest. Andy, would you do me a favor? Uh, would you introduce the next person? Yes, this is uh, Alexis Dupre. Alexis is the reigning uh, Miss New Mexico and just returned from uh, from the contest on the East Coast, and we're very glad to have her here. And she's got a platform that we think is very applicable to uh, to our message here today. Here's Alexis. Alexis, you there? Monty? Yes, Alexis. Let me first of all let me just congratulate you uh, on uh, your your uh, position and, and what you uh, have received. Uh, in recognition of your wonderful service to our country as Miss America in New Mexico. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So why why is Recovery Month important to you? Well, I'd never been a part of an event like this before, and when I was contacted about it, I thought, um, well, this goes perfectly with my personal platform. And for the pageant, we're required to have um, a personal platform, which is, you know, a uh, an issue that's close to our heart, you know, a nonprofit, something like that. And mine is the power of one, single-parent families. Mm. And I'm also a communication studies graduate from New Mexico State. I've taken a lot of classes on family communication, and we've studied um, how uh, children of single-parent families deal with these kind of struggles more than those with dual-parent families. Um, so I thought it was really applicable to this issue, and um, I've just done some research lately on uh, the drug usage in New Mexico, and it was uh, astonishing to me. So um, I'm really lucky to be a part of this and uh, to be included. And I'm reading here statistics, um, uh, people not receiving treatment that needed 225,000 in New Mexico alone. Mm -hmm. That 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 is absolutely horrific. Right, and I, I looked up some statistics before I came up here, 
uh, just out of curiosity. And I read that in Doniana County, which is where I go to school, um, the availability of drugs on high school campuses has nearly dro- doubled. And back in 2009, um, Espanola, New Mexico, was named by Forbes, Forbes as one of the drug capitals of America. And I couldn't believe that. And so I, I know that it's a, a really big issue here. And um, I got some attention at Miss America because we have an intro for our state and just something clever that we come up with. And I chose to do mine on Breaking Bad, the show that, you know, oh, right, right. has become iconic for. And I, my intro was, we are not breaking bad, we're breaking through. And I thought that went perfectly along with this event. Wow. And, and, and yeah, and met the methamphetamine usage in New Mexico is just is off the charts, and I know it's becoming more of an issue every day. But what I do like about the show and what I tried to highlight in my interview up there was that it does show the negative side effects and, and all the, the bad things that come along with this. And so while it's a cool show and it's doing great things for our economy, I think it does highlight the, the harder parts of that. Yeah, you bet it does. You, you bet it does. Uh, okay, so you're going to be, are you going to be speaking at the event uh, this afternoon? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Are, are you excited and nervous? Oh, I'm not nervous. I've been really uh, happy to get to know uh, Barry and uh, Andy this morning. And, sorry, Andy. <laughs> I was like, it's Randy, I got all confused. <laughs> but we've been talking all morning, and they've kind of, you know, really included me and made me feel a part of the team, and, and so I'm really excited about that for later. Well, we are really excited. We are really excited to have you representing New Mexico to be speaking out on this issue. Uh, just, just a wonderful thing that you're doing. Thank you for your service so much, and congratulations again. Thank you. A- absolutely. All right. Um, uh, Alexis Dupre, Miss America, New Mexico, 2013, reigning. And uh, just so so excited to have her on. Okay, next up is uh, the former drug czar, four-star General Barry McCaffrey. Uh, Barry, are you there? I am indeed, Monty. Yeah, glad to be with you. Uh, it is such an honor to have all three of you guys on. Uh, again, I applaud what you're doing. Um, the simple truth is we're still living in a world filled with stigma. How are we breaking through this thing this year at Recovery Month? Well, you know, you make a perfect point. There's two aspects of the drug and alcohol abuse that are unique in the health challenges we face. One is stigma. The other is denial. Mm. Um, you know, I tell people, most of what you don't like about America, this powerful country, the biggest economy in the face of the earth, uh, tremendous educational and medical system, if you find something you don't like, the chances are enormous you're actually looking at drug and alcohol abuse. 2.1 million people behind bars. Overwhelmingly, people end up in a life with medical, social, legal, work-related problems, and it's caused by drug and alcohol abuse. So breaking through that, and uh, which I think increasingly we're doing, there's some good news here. Look, you can have a conversation now in public, and people will buy the argument that science-based drug and alcohol treatment, not just the magic of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, but also, you know, you, you got the life-healing.com. And, and look at the program that we're running out there. And this is one of 140-some-odd programs around the country. It's a small one. It's a 30-bed uh, uh, facility. It's people who have gone through many other rehab programs. Most of them have severe trauma in addition to chemical dependency. And, you, you know, it's a 35-day program. Uh, the staff is one-on-one with the patients, and the results are absolutely dramatic. So it's a stigmatized problem, you're right. Uh, It's not just the people who are in chronic substance abuse that are in denial. So are their parents. You bet. Their employers. The mayor doesn't want to be known as, you know, being in a city with severe uh, problems. And we're here in New Mexico, and, you know, of course it's across the country. It's, It's not East Coast or West Coast. It's certainly not 
a problem of minorities or poor people. You know, I tell people one of the biggest uh, rates of drug and alcohol abuse in the, of any occupational group are health care providers. So anyway, here we are, uh, 11 o'clock uh, at, uh, today, and this is one of, as Andy said, 100 places across the country where we're drawing attention to National Recovery Month. And some of your uh, listeners may want to, you know, call 877-446-4128. And uh, if they've got a loved one or employee or a friend or they're, they're encountering difficulties themselves, ask for help. Help's available. And that number again, listeners, 877-446-4128. It'll be posted here at the website. Uh, let, let me ask you the same question I asked, Andy. Uh, it's one thing to write legislation uh, when we're talking about the, the Parity Act. It's a whole other thing to get every individual state to be uh, good boys and girls, is it not? Oh, yeah. We're worried about this. You know, uh, there, there's a, you know, one of the things we've got to recognize is most Americans don't have drug and alcohol problems. Thank right. God. Um, most Americans don't smoke cigarettes. It's about the stupidest thing you can do in life. Uh, you know, that kills 440,000 people a year. But the problem is, you know, when you look at the population, pick a number you believe. We're using 24 million. There's a there maybe a quarter of a million here in New Mexico. There's a significant number of people out there uh, that have difficulty. The best way to protect your family is to sit down with your kids, homeroom teacher, uh, pediatricians, coaches, uh, and make sure your kids don't end up in drug and alcohol abuse. When they do, now it's hard work uh, to get them out of it. So um, it's stigmatized and uh, and difficult to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and you know, we, enough cannot be said about actually sitting down at the dinner table uh, every night with your family. Uh, 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 praying with your family, reading with your kids, spending time going to their games, being involved in their life, monitoring their internet access. Um, I, I, my, my, my son asked me, he's 15 years old, he goes, don't you trust me? I said, no. <laughs> uh, I think you, you're you right on the money. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and Alexis, uh, Alexis Dupre, you just interviewed, said the same thing. At the end of the day, the family, if you luck out and you're in a strong two-parent family, if you luck out and you're yeah. in a good school, if you luck out and you're playing athletics most of the year, the chances you have a significant problem are remote. But, you know, one of the numbers that always fascinates me is that both your parents are alcoholics or drug addicts. Fifty percent of the kids will have a chronic substance abuse problem. If one of them's an alcoholic, 25% of them will have a shirt. So the magic to me is, how come all of them don't have a problem? And you go to these devastated families yeah. with just cruel upbringings and ask the kids break free. You know, my dad was the son of a terrible alcoholic that died young. And, you know, somehow he got through that and, and uh, lived a model life, but... But it was a great challenge. And we talk about the three-generation nature of drug and alcohol addiction. That, you know, once you end up wrapped up in that lifestyle, it's your children's children who are the first ones that escape uh, the impact. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I, I'll tell you, we, we've got our work cut out for us. I think we are uh, we're doing better than we were, but we certainly have a lot more work to do, right? uh, correct? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I think uh, your listeners ought to have a note of optimism. Yes. You know, if, uh, if you're watching one of your loved ones, your employees, circle the drain going downhill, you're looking at a fatal illness. That's mm. going to end up. And recovery is absolutely possible. So not only on the website I gave you, which is here in New Mexico, but just on a national, go get on the web, find CRC Health Group or any other program that's science-based, and, and uh, call in and ask for help. And it is literally magical what can be achieved. We have come a very long way compared to even 10 years ago. 
And it is, uh, like I said a minute ago, it is such an honor to have you, uh, all three of you, on. Uh, I have the utmost respect for what you're doing. Uh, congratulations. Let, let's review one more time. 11 uh, o'clock uh, in this early afternoon today, uh, We there will be a, a conference, a news conference held. Uh, the location is 25 Vista Point Road in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Can can people view this on the web? How how can they view this from their homes? Well, uh, we're actually uh, going to have a lot of media there, but uh, and uh, I, I think we, your listeners ought to go to the, our, our website, recoverymonth.gov, and uh, there you can get a notion of nationwide why we're involved in this. And, of course, you know, you can learn more about this event. We'll try and put some video. That's a good idea on life-healing.com. So we'll try and get video and put it on the, on the site so people can see uh, who's there. You know, Miss New Mexico, here we've got uh, this tremendous vo- uh, voice of optimism. We're also going to have, we're very uh, impressed that the sheriff is there, Sheriff Garcia. Wonderful. You know, 26 years as a Santa Fe police officer, now elected sheriff. And, you know, I tell people, if you want to understand drug abuse, talk to municipal judges, social workers, emergency room personnel, or law enforcement officers. They flat know uh, what the impact of drug and alcohol abuse is. So Sheriff Garcia will also be there and speak, and we're very proud he's joining us. Well, I want to thank uh, all three of you. Uh, I would love to have you uh, individually on uh, to talk more about what you're doing. Would, would, you, would you guys be willing to do that at some point? Oh, absolutely. I know Andy Eckert's uh, available, and so am I. And um, Miss uh, New Mexico would also be an, another voice talking about the importance of families. Would, would you all three make sure that uh, uh, Bob Wiener has your contact information so I can get a hold of you? Oh, yeah, sure. You can go to Bob Wiener, and uh, we'd be uh, very proud to support your show and all the good work you've done in this in this area. And I, 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 I must uh, give a shout-out to Bob Wiener. I mean, what a, what a great guy. I can tell this guy is hopping uh, excited about Recovery Month. I mean, this guy he just talked my ear off, and I was like, I love this man's enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. No, he's been very important in the field, and he's been working a long time, both as a congressional staffer, and then he was a public affairs officer in the National Drug Policy with me for five years. So he's very knowledgeable and very uh, energetic on this issue, and we're grateful for his help. All right, uh, General McCaffrey, uh, please, please don't hang up. Can I stay on the air for just one second? Folks, uh, just a real special thank you to Andy Eckhart, the CEO of CRC, the country's largest treatment provider. Uh, Alexis Dupre, the, the current reigning Miss America for New Mexico. And, of course, uh, former drug czar, four-star general, Barry McCaffrey.